Cheers, our wine of the week. Today we're talking with well-known winemaker from Dramana Estate, Gary Crittenden. Gary, we hear a lot of comments from wine critics talking about uh, the best wine in the world is the one that you enjoy. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Ken, there's no point in going out and paying $100 for a bottle of wine just be because you read about it in a magazine and right. some, some uh, lauded critic said that this is a wonderful wine. Mm -hmm. If you get it home, share it with your friends and they say, what's all the fuss about? You know, if, if they're disappointed. On the other hand, you can go out and spend 10 or $15 at your local Safeway and bring home a bottle to share with your friends that's just wonderful. It meets with acclaim. So Gary, what should one look for in a good wine? Ken, without a doubt, the first thing that a any uh, enthusiastic or interested wine drinker should look for is a decent glass to drink it out of. Why is that? Well, you know, we have in front of us on the table two glasses that I think are, are near perfect. They're not only, uh, uh, they're, they're not only uh, glasses for drinking out of, they're glasses for tasting out of. They're a, uh, an imported Italian glass called a right. Zerutti. Right. And let me demonstrate something to you. You see, we're inclined to overfill the glass. I see. What we should do is really just pour that small amount in the bottom, pick it up. Now, this might seem pompous and pretentious, but it's not because it can be done informally. Why are we doing just, this? Just to, to activate the molecules on the surface of the wine, to lift the aroma off the wine, and then, of course, it's captured in the, uh, in the rest of the bowl. Right. Put, Put the glass to your nose and isn't that aromatic? Now, if I'd taken a standard wine glass, filled it to the brim, you, for a start you can't swirl it and nor can you smell it. Mm. So, so you've just gone through the point. routine. You, mm. You've smelt it, the bouquet. Mm. Now we're drinking, currently we're drinking a, a Dramata Estate Cabernet, Cabernet Merlot. Merlot. It's a blend. It's a blend of Cabernet nice and Merlot grown here on the property. Mm -hmm. Gary, this is a beautiful part of the world, walking through the vineyard like this. Is this relaxing for you or is it just work? No, far from it. It's, it's never just work. Because in reality, Tanya, this is where it all begins. And my background is, is in fact horticulture, so um, this is where I love to come on an almost daily basis, although with marketing and winemaking issues I don't get the chance to come out here as often as I'd like. But you know, after work, quite often, six o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening, before I sit down for dinner, I can come out here and I can perhaps leaf pluck a row. I mean, that simply means going through, doing a little bit of um, delateralizing, taking uh, taking leaves off to expose the bunches to the fruit and for me it's therapy I mean it really is it's just a wonderful half hour or an hour at the end of each day coming out here and just just meandering through the vine. So should I pull this leaf off here? Uh, you can do that. Can yes, I do that? Yes. A little hint, a little tip. Now here's a tip, some wines, particularly older wines, will need decanting. This should be done about 35 minutes in advance and it removes the sediment at the bottom of the bottle. So all you do is simply pour the wine slowly into your decanter and you stop when you see the sediment at the bottom. If you're doing this of an evening, you may not be able to see the sediment at the bottom of the bottle. So you can hold the wine over a candle and that'll let you see when to stop pouring. I have a chat to you. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just have a look at what, you, what you're eating? I'm eating, oh well. Yeah, what is it? And pizza. What is it? Vegetarian pizza. Vegetarian? What, what's the accent? Well, you're English. Um, near Manchester. Oh yeah. yeah. You out on holidays or you? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your favourite food? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> she, a girl who likes pizza. <laughs> to get produce as healthy and lush as this is not easy. It's done in a particular way. It's called hydroponic farming. Now, Anne, you've been involved with hydroponic farming for how long now? Around about eight years, Ken. What's the difference between hydroponic farming and ordinary farming? Well, with hydroponics, we're not growing in soil. We're actually growing in uh, water that's enriched with nutrients. And uh, this is quite different from growing in the soil. Also, Ken, we're not having to bend down to the ground to pick them, which is uh, a great advantage. And no spraying? Well, there's no spraying of herbicides. There's no need to spray for herbicides uh, with hydroponics because we don't have uh, weeds here. And uh, much less of spraying for pesticides because we're growing in a controlled environment. A little hint, a little tip. You know, as recently as 15 years ago, it was very difficult to get fresh coriander and you had to use the powdered dry stuff, which was a far inferior product and doesn't give that lovely sharpness and freshness to your Asian dishes. The leaf looks rather like 
the continental parsley leaf, although the growth of it is much softer. So when you're selecting it, when you're shopping, make sure you have a little crush and release that distinctive smell and you won't make the mistake. There's certainly no mistaking a hydroponically grown tomato because of the richness, the colour, the, the texture, the firm flesh, and I can testify they taste just fantastic. Mmm. Delicious. When I come across a tomato as beautiful as this one, I tend to treat them very simply. These hydroponic tomatoes are grown in a very protected environment, so their skin is really blemish free. They're very high in sugar and their flavour is just wonderful. I would be taking this little fellow, slicing him finely and serving him with some bocconcini cheese, some torn up basil and a very light lemon vinaigrette. Well, here I am in Main Street, Mornington. It's about an hour's drive south of Melbourne. And you and I are off to Provence. No, not that place in France, but the restaurant, just around the corner. Provence Restaurant is open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through till Sunday. It costs about $38 a head for three courses, plus what you drink. It is fully licensed and it has outside dining. So come and enjoy the true flavour of Provence.